All right, got a special guest today on KSO, Rudy Williams out of Northeast Oklahoma A&M, the JUCO program down there. First time we've gotten to talk with him. He just committed um, recently, and you also, you just told me you got off the phone with Coach Weber recently. So uh, first, let's start with that. What was your conversation with him like, and, and how's that going? Uh, you know, pretty much it's just hit the daily checkups. Me and him, since they've been recruiting me pretty seriously, he's talked to me on the phone every day mm -hmm. via text or call. He even FaceTimed me one of the times. You know, that was kind of, you know, I didn't think a guy like him would FaceTime. But yeah. He, he does it all. But, yeah, he's just checking in on me, you know, making sure I'm good, making sure everything's, you know, good right now with the times we're mm -hmm. going through. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll, we'll get more into the staff in K-State, but I want to get to know you too. But I guess let's talk about the coronavirus and, and, and how quarantine's been for you, where you're at right now and where you've been bunkering down. And, and, and um, we'll talk about more where you grew up here in a little bit. Uh, well, right now I'm in Florida. Uh-huh. Uh, I got family and friends out here. Um, pretty much the coronavirus has kind of just, you know, just had everybody on lockdown, including myself. I haven't really left the house much. You know, I just go in the front yard and, you know, exercise. I've been on a couple walks, but mm -hmm. haven't really been able to, like, do anything in the outside world for about two weeks now. And, you know, just kind of just staying safe. You know, I, health is the biggest concern. Yeah. So we just try to stay, stay healthy. So first, um, let's talk about uh, your your upbringing and stuff like that. Where you grew up, where you were, you know started playing basketball, what age you were doing that, and and just take me through all that. Uh, I'm from a city. It's called Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. It's about 30 minutes south of Toronto. Um, grew up playing basketball, really, you know, recreationally with my my friends and my older brothers and all that. You know, mm -hmm. pretty much everyone in my house liked basketball or played basketball. Uh, I didn't start playing competitively until I would say fifth grade. That's when I started playing like on a travel team and all that. Yep. And, you know, I liked basketball before that, but when I started playing competitive basketball, I think that's when I fell in love with the game mm -hmm. and like, you know, wanted to like make it my passion. I think if someone asked me when I was in third grade, what I wanted to be when I grew up, I didn't say a basketball player. I, that probably happened when I started playing competitive okay. in fifth grade and then it kind of just took off from there, you know, over the years, I just got better and, you know, started mm -hmm. to love the game more and more. Talk about your, uh, your process of your recruitment the first time around, you know, before you went the Juco route, uh, take me through all that. I mean, I know sometimes it can be a little different in Canada as far as getting recruited and stuff. Uh, when I, when I was in high school, well, I went to high school in Florida and okay. North Carolina. So I was already in, I was in America, mm -hmm. but, uh, coming out of high school, I was receiving like little to no recruitment and you know obviously it's everyone's goal to play uh, college basketball at the division one level you yep. know March Madison like that so you know I kind of have my my eyes set on that and towards my senior year when that wasn't happening I uh, was kind of bummed out and you know I was kind of questioning myself or questioning mm -hmm. if basketball me and all that but you know my coach introduced me to like Juco, like he was like, oh, like this is not done. You know, you can still go this route and then still get to where you want to be. So then, when I opened my eyes to Juco, uh, I took that into serious consideration. And then I was like, you know what? If that if that's gonna get me to where I want to be, then we'll do that. And you know, I was kind of being recruited by pretty much all like the high level Juco's. I had options to go whichever Juco I pretty much wanted to go to. So then. I chose the Juco route because I was like, you know, that, that seems like the smartest thing yeah. for me. So I did that and then, you know, had two years of Juco ball, obviously, and then my recruitment kind of took off when I was in Juco and, you know, here we are now. Yeah. To K -State. What, what, is, uh, what was the Juco life like and why did you choose that, that uh, to go to Oklahoma and play there? Um, the Juco life was good, honestly. Uh, on, like, over the two years – Friendships that, like, you know, I'm so happy. Friendships and bonds that I'm happy that I, I got to experience. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. If I could pick, if, like, if I could go back in time and pick another school, I would still go to Northeastern Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, I picked that school, really, because when I when I was being recruited by them, me and Coach Jackson, that's my head coach there, he, uh, we just hit it off from, like, the first time we met. Mm -hmm. And um, he was another one. He was kind of like Coach Weber. Like, he would check in on me every day outside of basketball. Yep. Like, he cared for 
more than just, you know, me being a decent basketball player. Mm-hmm. So, like, I felt that I could, if I went all the way out to Oklahoma, you know, and it would be my first time over there, I could trust him and, you know, mm-hmm. he would take care of me. And he told me that, that he would, and he did that. He, he didn't lie to me one time. And, um, you know, I just felt like I could trust him all of me, even though I'd be all the way over yeah. there away from family. And, I mean, it, it panned out because, you know. Sure did. Now you're, now you're K-State commit. Super excited for that. He was Rudy Williams, the new K-State commit. Um, I guess talk about your recruitment at that level then, too. Uh, the, the schools that came in, was, was Coach Weber the first coach you heard from from K-State, or was it an assistant that you heard from? Let's talk about all that. Uh, it was, like, late night about two weeks ago. Um, I'm just, you know, in my room chilling, and I go on Twitter, and I'm just scrolling Twitter because, you know, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. I just look at basketball stuff and all that. I get a DM from uh, Coach Lowry. Yep. And I didn't know who he was, so I checked the DM. And then I clicked, like, his profile, and it said, you know, assistant coach of K-State. So I was like, whoa. And this is kind of, you know, getting late in my recruitment. I kind yeah. of got my head on, you know, this school and that school and all that. And he just, he messaged me, and he asked, is it too late? And I was like, like is this guy crazy? It's like, it's K-State. It's not too late for you guys. You know? <laughs> yeah. I kind of, I put him in the mix. And then once I told him, like, once we agreed on mutual interest, like, they were interested in me, and I was interested in them. He passed the torch on to Coach Weber, and then me and Coach Weber connected and built a relationship for about two weeks straight. Mm-hmm. He called me, like I said, texted me, FaceTimed me too, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of just went from there. You know, I built a really good relationship with Coach Weber over the time, and I still am. So I just felt like, you know, I can trust him as well. Yeah. Did you, uh, did they ever get you on like a virtual tour or anything like that at the campus, or you still have to have to do all that and check out the campus and stuff like that? Uh, they, he showed me this thing, um, like this thing on the, at Kansas State Athletics website where Mm -hmm. I could take a virtual tour. So we went through that and, you know, I, um, I got to see all the buildings and all that. And, you know, the thing was pretty cool Mm -hmm. and it was HD. So like, it really felt like I was there and I could see everything clear here. It showed me all the buildings, the football facility, basketball, all the fancy buildings on campus and all that. So yeah, I got to do that, but, um, I still want to, you know, experience it full hand you know, when I get on campus mm-hmm. I want to see like real stuff yeah uh what do you um what was I gonna ask uh oh yeah so what were the other schools that were really you know up there in the top of your recruitment when it came down to close to you committing and stuff like that uh Murray State was in the mix Arizona State was in the mix New Mexico mm-hmm. um Central Florida Northern Kentucky, yeah. schools like that. There was a couple other, like, you know, bigger schools, but they were kind of, like, on and off with it. Yeah, so. makes sense. Um, uh, oh, yeah, so uh, you're joining. I mean, obviously, you'll, you'll come in as a junior, but this, this class, that, this 2020 class that K-State is bringing in, I'm sure you've, you've seen some of the guys that, that they're bringing in. And what have you thought about uh, the roster that, that's coming in? Because uh, – You'll be a part of right now seven new guys coming in, possibly eight coming up. It could be even more than that um, to you know try to revamp a, a K State program that you know went from having a Big Twelve championship to a down year last season. Um, what do you think of the roster and, and everything that's going into this next season? Uh, I think honestly the K State staff has done a great job recruiting. You know they have found pieces uh, when it comes from, from Nigel Pack, Nigel Pack to a. Syrie Lewis, they found they're bringing in some uh, really talented players, and I feel like that's what you got to do to win at that level. You know, obviously the Big Twelve is no joke; like yeah. that's one of the conferences in college basketball. So you got to bring in talent, and you got to be deep, and you got to have guys that can go to war every night. Cause yeah. There's no off nights in that league, and you got to have you got to have fighters. And then your point guard, six two, you know, uh, good size for a point guard, I'd say. What, what do you bring to the table um, as far as your game? Obviously, you put up 21 points in the JUCO level with playmaking ability with almost nine assists and stuff like that. But just from your perspective, what do you do well on the floor? Uh, what I bring is I'll bring toughness, I'll bring competitive, and I'll bring uh, major energy. But what I bring to the floor, though, is I'd say I, I call myself a dual threat point guard. Okay. And what I mean by that, I can 
get guys involved, you know, make my teammates better, you know, get assists, dish out and make plays. Mm -hmm. But I can also go and create my own shot for myself, you know, and score in bunches, I believe. So I feel like I can bring both scoring, scoring and uh, playmaking and helping my guys get better. And, you know, I've, I've only seen a little bit of tape so far, but it all looks like good stuff to me. You usually don't get the, you know, the, the weaknesses on the tape. But if you had to say what your weakness on the floor would be, if, if you had any, uh, what would it be? Uh, I would say my three-point shot off the bounce. You know, I, I got to mm-hmm. extend my range a little bit. You know, the Division One line got pushed back last season, so yep. that um, I can sharpen up my ball handling, tighten that up. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure when I'm tired, I still making the right the right moves and the right decisions with the ball, and really just you know have to work on putting up a, a full game together, playing mature and playing yeah. game full forty minutes of play. And then what, what, do you, what do you bring on the defensive side of the ball? Obviously, K-State prides themselves on that side with the staff and stuff. So, so uh, what, what are the kinds of things that you bring on that side of the ball? Well, I know I'll be talking my butt off on defense, mm-hmm. making sure everyone knows I got their back on defense. You know, guys trust me on that end. Um, I feel like I can get deflections a lot. Uh, I'm pretty long, and, you know, I can anticipate and read guys, see where they're, you know, making passes to and all that. I think I averaged about – two or it's like almost two steals yep. a game season so I feel like I can get in path, passing lanes and get out in transition for easy buckets and then what's the thing I mean it might have been some of the things you just said but what are, what are the things that K-State specifically said this is what we are bringing you in to do this is why we want you uh, you know Coach Weber you know he preached that he kind of wants an experienced guard um, I'm considered like a bigger guard so mm-hmm. defensively I know I'll be able to guard ones and twos because I'm a little bit taller, so that as well. And, you know, really they just wanted to bring an experienced guy, someone that can help lead, and, you know, I feel like I can provide all those things. Yeah. And then if, uh, maybe just a few more, but, like, what, what do you think is going to be the biggest difference from that JUCO level playing at the Big 12 level? Uh, it's going to be a heck of a jump, but, I yeah. mean, all the guys are going to be talented. Like, there will be no weak links on the floor, you know, size. Mm-hmm. Everyone in the Big 12, you know, they look like they could be on a football field as well. So yeah. I'm definitely going to have to gain about 10 to 15 pounds. Uh, you're really just the size and, you know, the, the talent level. Like, everyone is going to be good. Yeah. So. All right. Well, if there's anything else if, anything else you want to say to the fans out there, obviously, I mean, we're going to be putting this on our YouTube channel, if that's cool with you, and just showing yeah. people, you know, who Rudy Williams is. And, yeah, anything else you want to you say to the K-State fans out there? Uh, you know, it's been less than 24 hours since I've committed – to K-State and uh, on my social media I've just been receiving a crazy warm welcome I just want to say I appreciate that the K-State fans and the community they they seem unreal and you know I can't wait to get on campus and you know be a part of the K-State family all right Rudy Williams the new K-State commit uh, thank you so much for the time Rudy really appreciate it we'll be excited sure. to see you on the floor next year sir looking forward to it go Wildcats yes sir